I would like to really have a birth of a feather session, not a talk, and I would like to ask you to contribute and uh, participate, not about only by asking questions, but, but also by expressing, expressing options and criticizing the idea, if there's anything to be criticized. <laughs> um, I, the, the basis of what I'm trying to, exp to, to talk about, or what I would like to talk about, is um, uh, the small teams thing that uh, groups, um, that Debian is a very big group by now, and um, it's starting to get to the, co to the board of, the, of its scalability. People, we have officially about 1,000 people as Debian developers, lots and lots of users, lots and lots of knowledgeable people, um, and some inactive maintainers, and we start to lose sight of each other, we don't know each other anymore, all because for a long time already. And um, I think that small teams are a very good way of um, addressing all these issues um, at once. Small teams, um, as I expressed my platform, that's the URL there, um, under the small teams topic, uh, are, I think, one of the most important characteristics that a group as Debian um, can have to be in a health to, to grow in a healthy way and in a scalable way um, because they provide a, they can provide a smooth entry into Debian when people um, ask lots of questions when people don't know the ways Debian works yet and um, where they need to need to um, learn a lot and where, where they perhaps only want to help out a little bit in the beginning. At that point, they um, could learn easier and more smoothly and without, without less interruption and stuff in a small team. They could also, it's also a, a good way of, of getting to know people because you only have to learn to, to, to get around with, with 10 or so people, not with 1,000 or the people who are hanging out on the big mailing list or on the IRC. And um, because you are able to get to know each other faster, you're also um, more likely to, to get to know them quicker and feel at home faster. Because of that, it's also much more likely that you don't drop out as fast. If you, if you have friends and if you have um, people who you, you relate to, not only in, in a social context, but in a technical context, but also in a social one, where you can talk about um, any problems you might have, not only technical, but also with your car or with, with your, the, the, your favorite football team losing again and stuff. Uh, this might be a better uh, one possible place where you can start, start to talk about, peop about stuff and where you could, um, uh, yeah, meet others uh, to relate to. That's not the goal, to, to only talk about football or, or, or cars, but it's uh, an ad additional thing that you might be interested in and, um, and the, 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 your common developers, are, yeah, they, they might be able to, to be interested in the same things. And, um, you you, about, pardon? You're talking about loops? No, no. Um, I, I talk about um, uh, Groups on ISC, like uh, where you where you where you, where you have a, a local a little community where, which um, shares more than only technical problems. And these small groups can also form a, a certain knowledge pool um, when. When they work on a common subject, they will um, communicate about problems and solutions, and they will also be able to um, rem remember problems and solutions that others had before, and be able to ask the other one, how did you solve this again, and how did that work? And they also will be able to help others to solve the same problem again, and perhaps solve the same problem themselves, perhaps. 
so knowledge is spread out and it's not in one single place, but it's in several places at once. Because these teams can grow and divide themselves, they are also a very good way of um, to, to, to scale, because they are self-organizing. There's no central authority which will uh, be needed to, uh, to talk to when, when the team splits up into two groups, into two smaller groups again, when it, once it grew. Um, once the, the team dis discovered that one part is more interested in uh, the translation part, for example, of a program, and the other part is more interested in further development, they they, and they have reached a certain size, um, they might just be able to split up and still have ties there, but um, work on their own on this on these special focus topics. Uh, one, one question. Uh, sorry, I missed the, the start. Uh, do you have in mind uh, teams, small teams of developers or end users, or both? Actually, it can be both. Yeah. It can be um, a very smooth uh, new maintainer process, actually, okay. where the, tr the training happens in the group, okay. um, and it's, it, it doesn't need a um, a, a formalized thing more or less. Once you know that, notice that the, this person grew into a, a very knowledgeable person in this re in this field, you might just tell him, hey, why don't you get a um, a DB account? You could work even more efficient then. I th we think that you know everything that's needed to to be a full-fledged DB developer. Yeah. And others might not be even be interested in that. Perhaps they would just like to translate um, this little app application forever yeah. and update strings and stuff or perhaps um, others come into the group and by just asking questions because they have problems with these kind of applications in Debian mm -hmm. and um, with time they not only know the application but they also become interested in developing it further and then they might even do that <laughs> And uh, actually, in these small groups, it's much also much easier to to develop your your s special skills, your talents that you as a person inherently have um, even further to and to say you notice might, might notice for the first time that you are very good at graphics design, not just programming, and um, with help of others in that group, you might. Uh, develop that skill further and further and uh, become, yeah, well, learn in, in that uh, context. Others might perhaps uh, notice that they are good leaders um, for these kind of small groups. Mm -hmm. And it's really hard <coughs> in Debian right now to, to um, develop leadership skills because leaders are right now kind of frowned upon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, uh, in these kind of groups, it would be possible to to train very without being able to do much damage or uh, yeah in this on a small 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 scale um, these kind of talents and things which are definitely there but are right now in Debian hardly recognized and yeah not really yeah and within these small groups, communication gets much easier because you have only few people who are uh, you have to, to relate to. You know people better. You know what their buttons are, what uh, they need to talk about, and um, how to explain stuff. And because it can be informal and uh, it takes less effort, perhaps the knowledge in, within the group is probably better distributed and communication is easier. Then I also gave uh, some characteristics of what the team should be like in my platform. Um, they shouldn't be growing too big. If, if a group, the, the sweet spot is I guess seven, seven people. Um, and 
if, if, they become, if it becomes too big, then people lose sight of each other, they drop out, and the Mia missing in action um, problem reappears. Uh, if, if the group is small, people who drop or who, who um, seem, to, seem to drop out can be caught much easier. It's not about catching people, it's more like um, uh, keeping people yeah, hot, about, hot on the topic, so to speak. Or, um, uh, yeah, well, if someone is having a hard time in real life, you, ca you might either support him or know what's going on and trigger him once, he's per when the, once the problem is perhaps over so that he ca can come back into the group or can come back to working in the group. And the, gr the group must be aware and uh, should be aware and even might, it might even look forward to the point where it divides, where it's not um, one group but two groups. It might be, uh, um, some people f might feel like, oh, it's so cozy with these few people here and we don't ever want to grow and don't ever want to, want to separate, but actually it, it should be in their minds that that's not a bad thing, that, can, that it means actually that, that it's a healthy process to um, at some point split up and um, yeah, ex extend the, the whole growth process and uh, that it's a healthy and normal thing. It's a bio biological thing, thing, so to say. And these people must be somehow compat compatible. Um, Social compatible. Yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> um, so if, if some people have a... How do, do you know what I mean with social compatible? I, it's hard to explain, I feel. Um, can someone think of a good example? Maybe it's a one-to-one -one, uh, uh, of the German, and so the Germans understand. Only the German understand the... Perhaps is it a German se thing to say social compatibility? If you, if, if you dislike another one, you, you will not work with them together. You don't understand me? No, I said it's about the communication, it's about the mind. Oh, of course, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. But it's not just communication, it could even be like work habits. Some yeah. people might, you know, like to check everything into version control very quickly and have everything well documented. And some people may have a completely different style to that. Yeah, and true. it would irritate each other if they had to work together and they weren't really, yeah. you know, having the same style. Right. And um, for this, for the... For the, for the communication, it's also important that people spend time together, that they um, don't just... and th that this uh, communication is kind of real-time, that it's not... Um, mailing lists are kind of uh, not very lively. Uh, well, they can be lively, but they, you, it's hard to, to get the character of a person on a mailing list. Mailing lists can be much different than um, well, at meetings like this, these, or IC or other more interactive things. Um, so it's, it would be good if uh, the contact is as real as possible um, and if people are in the same time zone even so that they can uh, meet on IC or whatnot regularly or if, if they have uh, um, phone meetings for example even, I'm not sure, could be everything. What I also, also said before is that the team should not concern itself about technical matters only. Even if, if it's a technical working group, that it should be possible to bring up um, personal issues. That's important for, um, for growing friends, more or less. The goal, the goal is not to have an uh, exclusive group of friends, but to have um, people who feel something positive <coughs> for each other, who have some kind of respect for each other, not only working-wise, but um, perhaps or even socially. What if, if by chance, the people in, in this team cannot <coughs> work together? What's, what's, uh, what should we do if it doesn't work in this team? That comes to conflict resolution. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the question was, what, how, how can we, what, what could we do if we um, 
if people can't work together in, in these kind so of small if groups. one or two members in the team are just stupid, say, say it's this way. Okay. <laughs> if, if people are too stupid to, to be dealt with. Um, well, uh, there's always the option to, to, to leave them, for example. That's the ultimate reason, uh, the uh, ultimate... To fork. To fork. <laughs> yeah, you, it, it's possible that, it's, um, that these two people, people or uh, more people are this pers one person um, fits up better into another group, and then you should encourage him to to look for that group. <laughs> if, they work on the same topic, if they are working on the same topic and this socially stupid persons are in technical perfect. Yeah, that's interesting. Like, Is it um, you talk? No. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think teams are, are never uh, fixed. That it's a dynamic process. Right. And, uh, some members will leave the team and others will join the team. So we have always this, this dynamic thing True. in the teams. Of course, you also should be able to address such is issues yeah. that you um, should point out to two person that he should perhaps change in s a certain way, or that the whole group needs to perhaps adjust and become more stupid. <laughs> no. <But> the, <laughs> the, the problem is well, the people form around the task, and I was just provocating. I'm, I'm, I have no uh, certain thing in, in mind now, but it might happen that people who f are formed around this certain task are just not able to communicate. Yeah. With each other, but they want think, to solve the task. I think in real life it's not that that common. I think usually when you form a group. And people <laughs> notice that they don't fit in. Mm. They just don't grow in further. It's not that much of a real problem, I think. That, uh, and it's more likely that people who um, work well together or actually form a group. And uh, yeah. I think the, the real life events are very important yeah. for small teams. Yeah. And uh, if there is a communication problem, you. When I say you, I will have something else to say, but uh, you must make your best to have people just meet. Actually, just like we are doing here. I used to say that people are very unlikely to flame together when they have met once in real life. Yeah. And this is at least very important. Not easy to do, to do yeah. but uh, this is important for team's life, mm -hmm. to just meet and, as you said, to to be kind of a group of friends and share something else than technical tasks. Mm -hmm. True. Another thing which I also briefly mentioned was that the, the, the groups should be open to new people. They shouldn't set, feel, form this, um, we, are, we are feeling together, we are feeling so good together, we, won't, won't, we, don't, we don't want new people because they would disturb our uh, nice little world here, but they should be open for people who want to come into the group, who have additional um, talents, and who want to participate, they should be uh, should even have a, some kind of smooth uh, entry point where they can um, easy tasks for for newcomers. Actually, it's uh, um, not true that new people in a group want the sexy problems right away. Spell checking the documentation is an excellent task for new people. Really things that um, need no high skill set just to come into the thing, just to um, get used to the, thing, to the whole um, process. Simple things is, are much more effective to rope people into the real work which comes sometimes later than the sexy technical problems which are uh, to, be t to be solved later. Another good thing for a team is to have some kind of leader. Um, I think you, you see that in lots of places in Debian. Um, the international, inter internationalization um, project has, also get me, has <laughs> good leaders, I think. Debian installer has good leaders. Yeah. Debian Edu has a leader. Um, there are other groups in, 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 in local contexts which have leaders, and they, that works actually well. It helps. It's not that there are uh, small kings also which don't listen to people, but they are, of course, caring for, for the group in some way, and they try to um, further this group. And 
it's not to be it's nothing to be scared about that someone might be the become the evil over fr uh, what not <laughs> friend <laughs> also yeah please well kind of like the opposite of that what do you do if you want a team and you're ready to lead and you have all kinds of information and things to do but nobody likes your software enough to uh, want to join the team I think you know what I'm referring to as well um, yeah, webman. <laughs> yeah, webman is a problem. Uh, Enrico Tini has the same same problem with dev tags, and he started with um, with the uh, what up? What up? What up? <laughs> um, it's not true that nobody likes dev tags. No, no, it's not like well, nobody, nobody likes, likes webman. Problem. That's for sure. Yeah, that's. Oh, well, <laughs> it's not true. Everyone wants to help, and they say they're ready to help, and then they take one look at it, and you never hear from them again. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's the problem. That the, be a problem. the software should be Well, it seems to be popular with the users. Otherwise, yeah, actually... then they have a look at the code. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Enrico, Enrico tries the approach of um, giving simple tasks to people to actually have the simple tasks ready, and um, tries to rope people into doing them first, and to to get them more and more interested. Yeah. This is one thing I made uh, for the shadow package maintenance. Uh, uh, to get more people involved, we have a lot of areas, and we started by localization tasks, and I get a few people for localization tasks. A bug triaging is very important, and it doesn't require as much skill as you might think. Doing some good bug triaging is, uh, needs a good knowledge of the bug tracking system, but not necessarily a good knowledge of the software. And it's quite easy to give this task to new people, as long as they know Debian enough. Yeah, just say, and, and Google wants more, and he will stay. <laughs> <laughs> you can't like even set a record, but now it's like that. That's what I wrote on my platform, more or less. Um, and you didn't elect me. <laughs> yeah, this is why we are here. So we have to choose between Brandon and you, and we chose to, to see right. you. Um. <laughs> and I voted for Brandon. <laughs> yeah, right. um, so, um, what what problems do you see? What what do you think? What um, what would you like to to talk about regarding small teams. Well, I want to uh, give my experience with the German Scholar Linux team, what we are doing and how we are working together. So we started this this year to uh, experiment uh, one weekend in a month. So we have every month we have one weekend to learn and to work together. And if somebody joins this weekend, I really know if I could work with him or not. <laughs> so it's a good chance to know about people more than by mailing list or by yeah, IRC. Mm -hmm. But um, there's a mathematical, it looks like a mathematical problem. Uh, I have done a lot of work in political issues and I saw the, the groups are always uh, pending between 10 and 15 people. If it goes, it goes up, it will split nearly automatically. And if it goes down less than five or four people, it will uh, die. die. So this, I don't know, I'm a sociologist, but I didn't find out why it is, but it looks like a mathematical problem of communication. Have you tried to, to split the group? No. Um, Have you tried to develop a new leader in that group? No, we try to build uh, other regions, regional group is, is the approach mm -hmm. now. Because we are in the northern part and there are other groups about Skolinux now. So, mm -hmm. what, I, what I'm thinking, uh, what is important to find a solution for somebody who wants not more join this group. A good solution not to lose his space. So, if there is trouble and somebody is coming, not coming, so how to solve this? Actually, what you're saying that there's um, a, a certain range of 
um, people, numbers of people who can work together, that often is an indication of the um, potential of the leader. There, uh, most people, or most, most leaders, have a certain number of open parts, so to speak, <laughs> which they can um, keep uh, connections up on. And often the leader is the, the, the social person in the group who um, keeps everyone involved and stuff. And uh, these, some people manage somehow magically to attract over 100 people and keep them alive and keep them going. I'm not such a person. Um, but it's but there are actually different different types of leaders, and the the type of leader which is ultimately effective is the, that leader who who looks for new leaders, makes them grow up, take over responsibility, and take over part of the group. Yeah, there is a there is now a working and learning weekend now in Germany at the same time. Mm -hmm. I'm not there. Great, right. <laughs> great, right. and it's running. Yeah, good. So, um, really? Yeah, yeah, you can go to the IRC, you can see what they're doing. So, um, <laughs> so I think the, the, the point is actually, and at this, and this, um, it's a scalability problem and it's a leadership uh, development problem at that point. Often groups need leaders and most groups in Debian actually have leaders and, um, yeah. Some, some are bigger and some, some are smaller. Yeah. Maybe our leaders in Debian, uh, because of our technical culture, we based the, the, the skills to be a leader mostly on technical skills. On coding. That's <laughs> on coding, <laughs> yes. And this is probably a problem. Uh, we probably more need leaders with uh, social skills, as you said, yeah, exactly. uh, and maybe less technical things. And uh, because if you have both the technical things and the seat of leader, you can become a dictator. Okay, and in just uh, if, if you have not the, I speak by experience uh, uh, about this shadow thing because I don't know a single byte of this of the code of this package I upload. And uh, this is quite good because you have good people who give you good advices and you just have to organize the things so that they, they work. And this is the role of the leader. And mm. sometimes just hide himself or herself and just hear, and listen and summarize. Mm -hmm. and that, that's a part of the group of leader. About the scalability, uh, it probably depends on the yeah. size of the project because saying 10 to 15 when you talk about Debian package is, is a, lot, a lot of people and uh, I'm afraid that not much uh, teams will reach that limit of 10 people. Yeah. I, I'm just quoting from a mail from Debian Private System, only one sentence. It sucks that our former DPL is a magister in psychology and did the fuck about that. I think this is really, really uh, precious example. I do not speak about the facts he did not uh, thought about, but I think it's not true. But the, the, the reasoning that he is a magister of psychology to use that he is, did something wrong is completely a bad example for what happens in Libya. It doesn't matter what he studied, it's just to be a leader and not something else. And then, by the way, he is technical in, in several things. I, I think. Did everyone understand that? Okay. Um, no, it's, 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 you rephrase. Yeah. You understood. Um, Andreas pointed out that um, uh, TBM, I think, uh, was criticized for being uh, not only technical person uh, and, a, and, a, and a Debian leader, um, which, in my point of view, is not really helpful or not 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 good. TBM is one of those rare people who has 100 open ports. He, right. He kept up with hundreds of people and knew their personal situations. True. And, um, yeah, but it wasn't very visible to the anonymous uh, people in, in, in Debian. I think he only worked with the core 
No, I'm, 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 not too, I'm not too sure. He was very, very open, at least at the beginning. I can I have the person feeling. to him who would tell me why they weren't, why they weren't able to work on their building at the time, for example. Uh, he, was, he just did a bit of disappear in the last past year of his, of, uh, yeah. of, of his two years uh, period. So, then he was really not so visible anymore, but before that he was very visible. Uh, when I started working with David, uh, uh, he was quite, uh, I just saw that he answered quite often and quite helpful, so it was really very useful then. I've really only seen him on the David Installer channel and, and, and practically nowhere else. Uh, but I, I think this is not, not the problem. The problem is that, that people base their reasoning on the fact that he is studying psychology. Now <laughs> it's completely irrelevant. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Actually, I got the same feedback yeah. from people when I asked for feedback why, why I didn't get elected, mm -hmm. and someone said, that I should try to build up a good technical um, reputation before I would attempt to become Debian project leader, mm -hmm. which is, I think, not the best way to approach it. Um, but I also got questions about how um, about drawbacks of uh, small groups. People said that um, it might be become a fight infight between small groups in Debian, that the kernel team would start blocking the installer or that Debian Edu would um, uh, hinder the development of uh, whatnot. I don't know. Have you ever ex ex experienced this? Well, I, I think there are, we have different type, types of groups. If I would say it's an installer group, or what I know more is a release group, which also I say is just a small group of people. I think we are very open to add people. Everybody can join, can join, our, join our discussion channel, um, IRC. Everybody can write a mail. Of course, of course, if, if there's off-topic off -topic discussion, we say no, no off-topic discussion here, please, for very good reason. But that was it. Um, well, for these groups, I, don't, I, don't, I didn't see anything. Of course, sometimes the kernel team, the installer team, the release team have, has different opinions. For example, about the kernel versions. But I think in the end we got to a solution where we all were, well, we all could live with it. Nobody was really happy, but the facts didn't allow it to work that everybody is happy with it. Even one group is totally happy because it was just uh, difficult. That happens sometimes, but I think in the end it was a very productive go-together. Mm -hmm. And the other teams that are a bit, well, more hidden, I would say. They say, ah, oh, this person is also part of the team. I, didn't, I never knew that before. For example, I, I was really uh, uh, quite astonished when I was in Vancouver and I made mail, oh, there's something like a Teams cut, and two members of Teams cut to the Pets meeting. I didn't know it before uh, when, I, when I get to the plane. <laughs> yeah, and that is really something I'm not so happy with, and it's perhaps a bit difficult to, to, yeah, to work with such a team. Because uh, when it was announced that, for example, Teams cut makes uh, the meetings public, or makes uh, publish minutes of the meeting. I think I've that one or two min, uh, min, minutes since the DPL election, which is I think three months ago. <laughs> That's a thing that make it a bit more difficult. And for for example, for the for the least team, we, ma uh, we make our minutes public if we, if we have meetings. We had meetings. Uh, we usually make meetings in public. There are of course sometimes exceptions, but the public is the default, not the uh, not the exception. And for the, well, I think that uh, this question is. Which way of team do you want to like? And different teams behave different in such situations. Could you rephrase that into a more clear statement? I, th I think that's kind of... Um... Well, I think we have different types of teams. And with such, I would say, open teams, um, it's, it's very easy to, uh, to, uh, to take it on together. Especially as if there are uh, connecting points, it's, it, will, it will happen very fast that there are people who are in both teams. That's true between the installer team and the kernel team. That's true between the installer team and the, and the release team, for example. And the other teams where, well, where the team membership uh, happens on a, well, perhaps um, on a more, on, a, on other criteria, I would say. And it might be more difficult. Of course, there are teams where there's a good reason. For example, security team who reads VendorSec, they, they can't trust any de de developer joining VendorSec. That's